So continuing to look at Gaussian elimination to solve a linear system, um, let's take a look at an example where there are no solutions. And so in such a case, we say that the system is inconsistent. So we've got a, an example here. Let's see. And let's go ahead and solve this using Gaussian elimination. So first step is to write down the augmented matrix, which would be 3 minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 5, 4, 7, minus 5, minus 8, 3. Okay, so now looking at this matrix, um, the first thing I want to do is kind of get things right in the first column. I always work from left to right. And, and this is sort of an ugly one because all these numbers are relatively prime. Um, which, which is no good. So, I mean, you could do something like uh, the sort of brute mo force method of dividing the first row by 3 and the second row by 2 and the uh, third row by 1 seventh, and then you'd have all 1s and you could cancel some 1s and make it look like 1, 0, 0 coming down the first column. Eh, crude, but uh, effective. Uh, but but really painful to deal with because then you'd have all these thirds and sevenths and ninths floating around through your matrix and it would just be a nasty mess. So uh, I suggest the, a, a different approach instead. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the guy that's smallest, this one right here, and subtract multiples of him from the other guys. And that'll get me some ones on the board. So this is just kind of a warm-up step to sort of make things a little bit easier. So let's see, so I'm going to be using 2, 1, 5, 4. So that one will not change. Uh, I just have to figure out what to do with the other ones. So I'll subtract one copy of row 2 from row 1. And I will subtract three copies of row 2 from row 3. And then that will get me a 1 in each of these positions. And then the numbers will be nice and a little bit smaller and, and easier to deal with. So, okay, doing the rest of the arithmetic, subtract the second row from the first. Um, so then we'll get um, minus 2, minus 5, minus 3. And subtract three copies of the second row from the first, and we'll get a minus 8 and a minus 23 and a minus 9. All right, um, now we're in business. OK, so now I'm going to uh, use this um, 1 as my first pivot. Uh, and I, I'm going to use it to kill off the, the 2 and the 1 here. So that tells me what my next row operations are going to be. So I'm going to use this row. So I'll just recopy it here because it's not going to change. Um, and then I'm going to uh, subtract two copies of row one from row two and subtract one copy of row one from row three. Okay. Um, then let's see. So that will give me a zero. So what I'm aiming for is getting those zeros right there. And then I can see that, that my, my first column is all nice and pretty exactly the way that it's supposed to look in reduced row echelon form. So um, doing the rest of the computations then, let's see, that's going to give me 5, 15, and 10. And that one's going to give me uh, minus 6, minus 18, and minus 6. Uh, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, <coughs> OK. So. Now I've got the first column sorted, and I need to work on the second. But before I, I look at the second, um, I notice that uh, this uh, has fives. It's a multiple of five. And this one here is a multiple of six. So I'll simplify things by uh, getting rid of that. So let's see. So starting a new row. So let's see. So I've got my 1, 2, or minus 2, minus 5, minus 3. Uh, and then dividing the second row by 5, I have 0, 1, 3, 2. And so this is uh, 
dividing the second row by 5. Um, and then also dividing the third row by minus 6. I have 0, 1, 3, 1. Um, okay, and so then let's see. So now the second and third row look very similar. So I can cancel a bunch of stuff off there by subtracting one from the others. So I will do uh, minus row two added on to row three. Uh, so one minus two minus five minus three stays the same. And zero, one, three, two stays the same. And I subtract and I get zero, zero, zero minus one. Okay, now the moment that you see something that looks like this, you know that there's going to be no solution. And why is that? Well, um, let's look at the, the equation that this is, uh, that this corresponds to. This corresponds to 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 equals minus 1. And that says 0 equals negative 1, and that's definitely a contradiction. So we know that this one is going is inconsistent. And I don't even have to take it all the way to reduced row echelon form, uh, because once you have a row that looks like this with, with all zeros on the one side, and then something that is uh, non-zero over here, then you know you have an impossible equation. And so, um, the system is inconsistent. If and only if it has a row, or, um, or can be put into a form where it has a row where there's a bunch of zeros on the left side of the bar and then something that's non-zero on the right side of the bar. And if it's non-zero, then with a row operation, we can convert it into a 1. So if I multiply that third row by minus 1, I would, I would see a, an example of such a thing right here. Okay, so this system has no solution. In contrast to what we saw in the last example, notice that the reduced row echelon form of the coefficient matrix here is not the identity.